Hey guys, it's Ben and Dot. It is Thursday and today I kind of want to cover a topic that seems to be like super hot in all the moms groups that I belong to right now and there's just a lot of questions that ladies are asking about having a c-section whether it's their first c-section or whether they've had an emergency c-section and now that they are um, being required to have a c-section for their second pregnancy or maybe it's your third pregnancy. Um, there's just a lot of questions regarding c-sections right now. I'm at least seeing like one to two a day. So I wanted to cover this simply because I've had three. So I consider myself somewhat of like an expert in this um, area. And I wanted to make this video for all the moms, whether you're a first time mom, whether you're a second or third time mom, and their partners, because there seems to be so many questions and so many myths really regarding a C-section. So I am like my little handy dandy list here and I'm gonna try to make this video um, as quick as possible, but to cover as much as possible so that you know how to prepare for your C-section and hopefully this answers any questions and gives you a more positive feeling about having a C-section. So a lot of women have C-sections, let's start off with, um, whether it's elective, whether it's for medical reasons or because they've had past C-sections. Some C-sections just happen because there's failure to progress in the baby's heart rate, these cells, or there's a, a complication happening and your doctor feels that it's best to do it. So those are emergency C-sections normally. An elective C-section typically happens when the woman doesn't wanna have a VBAC, meaning a vaginal birth after cesarean, and she elects to have a repeat section. Um, for myself, I've had two elective C-sections and I've had one emergency C-section, my first C-section being an emergency C-section. And each one of them was super different. Obviously, when you're in an emergency C-section situation, it's a bit more fast paced. It's not as relaxing as having a scheduled C-section. And it can be super overwhelming and traumatic, honestly, for a lot of women because they don't understand the process. And it's really scary when you're being whisked away into the OR and your baby's in distress. So the best thing you can always do is prepare your partner. If you're choosing to have a vaginal birth, that the option of a C-section may be there. Um, so don't ever think of it as a negative stigma of having a C-section because C-section moms kick ass and it takes a lot of work and, to have a C-section. And I give every mom that's ever had one a lot of credit because it's equally, if not more, hard as hard as having a vaginal birth. So let's talk about the prep for a C-section, a scheduled C-section. Really the prep is pretty straightforward. Your doctor is probably gonna tell you not to eat or drink anything six to eight hours prior before your surgery. And that is simply because you don't wanna have anything in your stomach when you're on the OR table. And if you get sick, it's not gonna be fun to be hurling up pizza and cheeseburgers. But also something to remember when you're prepping the night before for your C-section is eat somewhat of a healthy, high fiber, high protein meal. Um, and I'm only saying this from past experiences is because using the bathroom after a C-section can kind of be tricky. So if you have a, like a high fiber diet or a more protein in you the night before, your first bowel movement is typically going to be a lot easier than if you've ate a ton of crap and you get constipated. So I know that's something we all don't want to talk about as bathroom things, but we'll talk about that in the, in the end of this video here, what to expect after. But the prep is pretty straightforward and simple. So typically when you have a scheduled C-section, your doctor will tell you to arrive at the hospital at your certain time that you're given, but always be flexible with this time once you arrive. Because if there's women that are in distress or situations that are happening and they have to bump your time for the OR, um, you maybe push back a couple hours of having your C-section. And don't worry if you're hungry or you're thirsty, your nerves are gonna get in the way and it's not gonna matter that day. Trust me on this, absolutely trust me. Um, my C-section for my third baby here happened at 8.40 at night. So I did not eat or drink that whole day. And trust me, my, I was a ball of nerves. So the last thing that I was thinking about was having a beverage or having something to eat. So um, once you arrive, just be flexible, like I said, that the OR time may change. And, um, but they'll check you in, you'll get into a room, you'll get into a gown. Um, your nurse, you'll usually be signed to nurse, and she'll explain to you that they're going to take your vitals when you first come in, your temperature, you know, your blood pressure, just make sure everything's good there. Then they're gonna start an IV line. And through this IV line, they're gonna draw some blood just to check your blood count um, and see how your, your levels are. They're gonna also check um, just basic labs to make sure you have no infections going on at the time. And if needed, um, if there is an infection, don't stress, they'll be able to administer your medication that you need at that time. Um, in my case, I needed to have my blood level checked because my previous C-section, I ended up having two blood transfusions because 
I was anemic and had um, some bleeding issues after. So they just wanted to make sure that they had um, proper blood supply in hand for me and that going in, I was already at a good starting point. So um, once they check your vitals, they draw your blood, um, you'll get some fluid administered from the IV as well. And your doctor will typically come in and let you know whether they're on schedule for your C-section or they're running behind and just answer any questions that you may have at that time. You also will be signing a boatload of paperwork, just consenting to the surgery, going over your insurance information. And um, during this time, it's a great time because your nurse is going to be checking back in with you once you've you know gotten in the room and they're in, and it, it can get pretty hectic super quick. So also talk to your nurse and your doctor about your wishes, whether you're going to breastfeed or you're going to bottle feed your baby. That way they know during the C-section and we'll come here in a second and talk to you about why that's important. So it's a good time to, like I said, to ask your doctor when they pop in, any questions that you may have or any concerns that you may have and um, discuss how you want your c-section to go with them because you can be super involved in your c-section um, my doctor was great it was a very relaxing experience my last c-section i felt very included in it and i felt like i didn't miss out on anything so i'll get to that coming up in the video um, after this typically anesthesia is going to come in and i'm going to tell you gals anesthesia is your best freaking friend during a c-section I paid more attention to my anesthesiologist and my poor husband during my C-section because they're the one that's kind of keeping you sane and keeping you relaxed, keeping the meds flowing through you. But not only that, but they do so many of these and they're literally right here on the side of your face that that's your comfort because you know that, okay, I'm safe. I have this person next to me. They're talking me through my C-section. If I'm getting a little nauseous or I'm getting a little anxious, they're going to be the ones to give me some medication to kind of help me simmer down and feel a lot better. So um, anesthesia is going to come in and let you know how they're going to um, administer your spinal. So typically with a C-section, you're going to get a spinal. It's a block shot in the back of your spine that numbs you. And typically it's from like your breast down. And the length of time that you're going to be numb varies from person to person. Some women, it may be four hours. Some women, it may be eight hours. Please do not believe the ladies nine times out of ten that say, Oh my gosh, I felt everything during my C-section. Anesthesia is not going to let that happen to you. I'm telling you this from experience. You're not going to become paralyzed either from your, you know, the spinal. It is a very easy peasy process, okay? And they're going to go over that with you. They'll go over any allergies you have with your anesthesia well. And they're going to let you know that, you know, if you're feeling a little anxious, let them know. They can give you something to make you feel better. So, like I said, anesthesia will just come in and they'll go over everything with you. And they'll let you know that they're going to be your first point of contact once you hit the operating room. So... Now you get to make the big decision. Um, it's time to go into the C-section room. Who can go in the OR with you? Typically, you're gonna be allowed one person to go in the OR with you, and they're gonna be suited and booted up in a suit. Um, and if you want your spouse, great, your mother, great. Um, but, excuse me, you're only gonna be allowed one person to go in the C-section room with you typically. And some doctors allow them to bring in their camera, some don't, so that's a question to ask your doctor um, if you want pictures taken during your C-section. Um, understand that you're going to be in the C-section room, the OR room, for about 25 minutes without the party that you've chosen to be in there with you, just because of prep, just because they have to make sure you're numb and cutting you open. So it's always great for dads or partners to know that once they take wife um, or girlfriend or baby mama into the OR, you're going to have a couple minutes to yourself. And I learned from my husband, this was a very like deep and reflective time for him because he was really nervous because we were separated and he didn't know what was happening to me. And I was alone and that can be kind of overwhelming. So just offer your partner reassurance that you're coming in there, you're going to be there and dads understand that she is going to be in great hands once she gets into the OR. Um, so once you're in the OR, what can you expect ladies? So once you're in the OR, first of all, it's going to be cold. It is cold as hell. Um, it's to keep germs at bay, but it's also for, you know, the staff. Nobody wants to be super hot during your C-section. So um, once you get in there, you're gonna see a lot of faces. Do not be overwhelmed by the amount of people you're gonna see coming in. You're gonna have nurses for yourself. You're gonna have nurses for the baby. You're gonna have your doctor. Typically, your doctor is also gonna have someone performing the C-section with them. You may have one or two anesthesiologists and you may have other residents that are training and watching your C-section at the same time. So understand, do not be overwhelmed and scared when you see the amount of people that are in the OR with you. 
Once you're brought into the OR, you're gonna sit on the table and the nurse is typically gonna sit right in, or stand, excuse me, right in front of you. And they're going to administer your spinal. It doesn't hurt. It's a little, little, little pinch. It's like a bee sting. It's not like this massive pain you're gonna feel. And once they find the space in your spine where they're gonna put the block, it's honestly like you're in a warm, hot tub once they give you the spinal. It feels amazing. You are super relaxed. You feel great. Um, you're, you know, all your fears are gonna be definitely eased once you receive your spinal and you're laying down. So after you receive it, they're gonna lay you down once you're starting to feel numb and relaxed. Um, here's a good time also to ask them for a medication if you do get nauseous. I get super nauseous, so they made sure that I was super comfortable after receiving my spinal and that I was not nauseous. During this time, once they lay you down on the table, your doctor's typically gonna come in and he's gonna just check areas on your belly or your anesthesiologist may just to make sure that you're numb. Um, if you feel something, let them know. I know for me, um, my other previous C-sections, I told the anesthesiologist, I was numb from like here down and it did not feel good. It was super scary for me. So I asked him, can you please be sure that this time it's my breastbone down? Because I just didn't wanna have, um, when it was higher up, I felt like somebody was sitting on my chest during my C-section and it made me feel really uncomfortable. So I discussed this with them prior and um, it was a really comfortable feeling, this C-section. So let me get back to what I was saying. <laughs> After your doctor or your anesthesiologist feels that you're numb down there, um, the drape kind of goes up. And the newest thing here in, in the Buffalo area is you can have a clear drape. If it's your first C-section and you have a weak stomach, I don't recommend the clear drape. If you're going in your second C-section or third and you don't, Wonderful, even your first, if you don't have a weak stomach, this is a great opportunity for you to see everything that's going on and be a part of your delivery process. Only if you don't have a weak stomach, trust me, because you're gonna see a lot happening. Um, I opted this C-section for not a clear drape because my husband, this was his um, first baby and it was super scary for him. And I know he has a weak stomach and I did not want him to, you know, pass out. I didn't want him to be nauseous from anything he was seeing. So um, that's why I chose to have the blue drape. So after the drape is up, they're going to make the first couple cuts. Um, during this time, you should not feel anything. You're not going to feel any pain. You might feel a little bit of pressure. You might feel a little bit of pulling, but you're not going to feel any pain. And your spouse or your partner or your mom or your friend is going to come in during this time. And they're going to be asked to stand on the side of your head. They can either stand or sit down in a chair as a C-section proceeds. So they're not waiting for them to make the first cut. This is a huge misconception that a lot of people have. You're already going to be cut open when your, your birthing partner comes in the room, um, in the OR room. So just keep that in mind. So guys, if you have a weak stomach, kind of hold it together, please. For me, um, once they started cutting is when I got really nauseous for some reason. So I asked for some medication and my anesthesiologist was awesome. And within three to five seconds, I wanna say, the nausea was gone. I was nervous, I won't lie to you. I was anxious because my previous C-section, um, the blood transfusions, I was kind of stressed out. But my anesthesiologist was holding my hand. They were talking to me through the procedure. How are you? Are you okay? Are you feeling anything? Do you need anything? It was super supportive. I also requested that we have music playing in the OR. So we were listening to some cold play going on and my doctor was communicating to me what he was doing and what step he was at. And that's something that I think is, is really vital is ask your doctor to communicate with you. Say, hey, do you mind telling me what you're doing? Because I really wanna be a part of my birthing process. And nine times out of 10, your doctor is gonna be totally fine with that. So we're jamming to Coldplay and my poor husband um, off on my left side is like losing his mind because he's seeing all this blood. I knew, you know, I warned him ahead of time and no YouTube videos could have prepared him for what he was going to see. And I'm, I, I feel so bad. I'm like ignoring him totally. I've got the anesthesiologist um, on my right hand side and I'm conversing with him. And my husband, I guess, when he came in, expected me to be like super knocked out, super scared. And I was so chill. I mean, because the meds that they're giving you, it, it relaxes you and ultimately they want this to be a positive experience for you. So any of these ladies that you see in these groups that are telling you like that this is a negative thing, please don't think that. This is, it should be a very relaxing, painless procedure that you're having done. So now um, once they get to the, the final layer, I call it, when they're about to pull the baby out, they, um, you're gonna feel some 
pushing, you're gonna feel some tugging, you're gonna feel some pulling. It should not be painful at all. It's just like pressure. Just imagine like somebody pushing a little bit on your stomach because they're trying to get the baby out of this incision that's literally probably four inches long and that they have opened up. So you're gonna feel that. It's not uncomfortable. Um, it may just take your breath away just for a couple of seconds. Don't panic. As soon as you feel it, it's typically over. Um, then the baby's gonna come out. I want to warn you because a lot of first-time parents freak out with this. Typically with C-sections, your baby's not going to cry immediately. It takes a couple seconds for a C-section baby to, you know, get its bearings, get its breath taken. So don't freak out. My husband was bugging and I kept telling him, honey, trust me, it's normal, it's normal, it's normal. So they're going to take the baby once the baby's out off to the side with the baby nurses and baby doctors. Just clean up the baby, examine the baby and give it a score based on how its appearance is, um, how its breathing is. And they're going to begin the process of sewing you back up. Now, for me, this was like honestly the hardest part because my spouse didn't know whether he should be with me, whether he should be with the baby. Um, so it, it is a longer process. Sewing up takes about 25 to 30 minutes and there's nothing like exciting going on and the tiredness kind of sets in. So you're like staring like up like this at a ceiling while they're sewing you up. You don't really want to have a conversation because really you just want to snug your baby. Um, during this time, it's a great time though to ask your doctor for some skin to skin contact with the baby. If you're feeling okay, um, this is something great you could do. So my husband came over and brought the baby when she was cleaned up and sat her on my chest. But for me, it was kind of hard because I was exhausted. It was already almost nine o'clock at night. I had this anticipation going through me all day. So I wanted to give him this time with her. So he took the time with her and I just kind of let them start sewing me up. Um, again, this is my third C-section, so my uterus started to contract um, as they were sewing me up, and I could feel it. It was not uncomfortable. It was like period cramps. So I let my anesthesiologist know, and he was more than happy to administer me some medication to make me more comfortable. So then the warm men's blankets are put on you after you're all sewed up, and you're whisked away back to the room, typically where you first came in and um, were admitted to. Um, during this time, you're also going to see a lot of nurses coming in because they're going to come in about every 15 minutes and start to massage your uterus and make sure that you're not hemorrhaging or you're not having any problems. But during this time, I think the scariest part for most ladies is, is they don't know that they're going to begin to shake. The shakes are from the dip in your hormone levels. You just delivered a baby. It was cold as hell in the OR. Um, you've been administered a lot of medication, so you're going to start to shake a little bit. And it can be more than a little bit. So I don't want you to freak out. You can have something to drink during this time. Um, and you can ladies nurse as soon as you're out of the OR or you're in the OR. The medication that they're gonna be giving you, they know you're gonna be nursing. They're not gonna give you something that's gonna har harm you or your baby. So um, for me, I was really tired, like I said. So my husband literally took our daughter and like latched her onto me so that I could nurse. And it was about a good four hours after my C-section that I started to get my feeling back, um, that I was just really tired. And as soon as I did get my feeling back, I wanted to walk. Now, the best advice I'm gonna offer any of you moms is when you start to get some feeling back and you're starting to feel a little bit better, you gotta get up and walk. The quicker you walk, the better you're gonna feel. Um, and for me, like I said, having each baby you have, your uterus is gonna contract a little bit harder. and um, so your first baby, don't sweat it, it's bad period cramps. For me, my third, it was kind of like hell on earth. So um, after that, you know, for the first 24 hours, you're gonna be observed. Just make sure there's no bleeding happening, um, like hemorrhage bleeding, because you will bleed after a C-section. You get a little bit of like periodish blood after a C-section. You're gonna be in some granny panties. Um, the first time you get out of bed is gonna be a little bit like you're on like, um, I call them baby deer legs. So take your time. But also, there's gonna require a, a little bit amount of you pushing yourself because it is gonna be sore. But thankfully, like, ha, ah, praise them. Um, with my other two kids, I didn't have this great medication that I was able to receive this time through my spinal. It lasted a full 24 hours. So it makes that first 24 hours easier to get up out of bed, easier to start moving. So like I said, whenever you're able to start to move, because that's gonna be the difference between having a quick recovery and having one that is prolonged. Um, so when you go, you know, when you're able to, you know, 24 hours later, start moving around, you can change your clothes. 
I brought some nightgowns. I found that nightgowns were awesome. They didn't touch my incision. I was able to wear the panties that they gave me. I was able to pull it down and nurse. Super comfortable. You can shower. Most people want to know, well, when can I shower? Typically the next day. Um, I showered the next morning. And for myself, I had glue for my C-section. Um, some doctors choose glue, some do staples. I prefer glue because it was much easier to move for me um, than the staples I had prior. So you're gonna be encouraged to get up and walk, like I said. You may feel some gas the next day. For me, um, some heat applied to my back made the major difference. Um, I took pain medication in the hospital for two days. After two days, for me personally, I know me, that it makes me feel worse to keep taking it. So I started taking just a little bit of Advil on days three um, through five. And then after day five, I don't take anything. Um, I also used a binder that they provided for my belly. So when I was getting up out of bed and doing my walks, typically how I walked is I would do every um, two to four hours, I would take a walk around the floor and it's a slow pace. I was also making sure that I'm drinking enough fluids and that I'm eating properly because that's going to be really important in your recovery period. Now also something um, I want to talk about with the recovery is I did not expect um, to bleed like I had bled with my third baby here. Um, it was more like a period. With my other two, it was just like scant bleeding. So bleeding is okay. Don't freak out if you're bleeding. Um, I bled for nine weeks with this baby. And sometimes it was really a lot of blood and sometimes it was a little blood, but it was completely normal. Um, also, I wanna give you guys a heads up, especially dads. When your partner is having a C-section, you wanna be very conscious of who you have at the hospital because the recovery can be a little bit tiring and can be a little bit tough. So be sure that you're not overwhelming mom with a lot of visitors. And mom, it's okay to say no, like, hey, I don't want any visitors. And when you go home, it's even gonna be more important that you limit your visitors, maybe to 10 minute times, because you're gonna need to rest up and you're gonna have the healing process really to start beginning. So um, let's talk about that. So going home, typically you're gonna go home after um, between anywhere between three and five days after a C-section. Once you get home, you're gonna feel like 100 times better, first of all, once you get in the house. But I hated laying in a bed. For some reason, like laying on the couch after a C-section is much easier to get up than laying in a bed. So make your station maybe downstairs on the couch next to a bathroom um, because you're really not going to want to do the stairs. And if you have to do the stairs, have somebody who's staying with you. Make sure that you have a supply of things like diapers, wipes, um, pads for yourself. You cannot wear tampons after you have a C-section. Um, just comfy clothes, bottled water by you. I mean, comfy clothes are going to be your best friend for at least a couple weeks. And try not to overdo it. A little bit each day you're gonna know when you overdo it because you're gonna be in pain and typically you're gonna have what they call the gush of blood if you're overdoing it um, so those are things obviously when you get home limit your visitors 10 minutes at a time maybe it's great that you have some meals already planned you know and prepped no vacuuming no doing the stairs too much no exercise for typically six weeks um, but listen to your physician whatever they tell you to do it's just really about Take this time to bond with your baby or your babies and take this time to bond with your, your partner or your family, whether it's your mom who's staying with you or your husband. Take this time so you guys can really, um, you know, form this new relationship with this baby that's came into your life. So what do you need to buy? This is a question that a lot of people are asking. Um, you need to buy some sanitary napkins, pads. You can buy some panty liners. You want to buy underwear. And I know I hate high-waisted underwear. I'm like a thong lover or like a G-string lover. High waist, meaning underwear that goes up to your belly button. Because if you get bikinis, it's going to rub against the scar. You're going to want to also have like a nice supportive sports bra or nursing bra because your boobs are going to become so engorged. It's going to hurt. And the last thing you want is your scar hurting and your boobs hurting at the same time. Um, also keep some stool softeners on hand because pooping after a C-section freaking sucks. Um, I did not poop for eight flipping days. And that's why I tell you, be conscious what you're eating because when you go, it's gonna hurt. Um, some women, maybe they're not like this. That was like the worst part of my C-section was taking my first poop. Um, afterwards, like I said, use your Advil at home or Tylenol, whatever you can use as needed. And ultimately, like your C-section is, is not a horrible experience. I would much rather after trying to have a vaginal birth, have a C-section over and over again. Um, I just find that the recovery, sure, it's six weeks, but typically by week two, you feel pretty good. 
And the more you walk, the better you're gonna feel. And dads, the best thing, you can be a super supportive of this time. Like she's gonna need you to help her with a shower. So the best thing you can do is like sit in the bathroom while she's having a shower. She might need you to wash her back. My husband was more than happy to shave my legs for me. And I'm really stubborn. So I'm gonna tell you how good of a C-section I had. Honestly, on day two, after my C-section, once I got transferred upstairs, I was taking a shower and decided to shave my legs. That's how good I felt. And my dumb ass split my C-section scar open. And no, it didn't bleed all over the place. It was a little bit of tiny blood. And the nurses were absolutely hysterical because they couldn't believe that I felt good enough to shave my legs. Um, so there you go. It just shows you they really weren't that bad. And another myth, like I said earlier in the video, that I wanted to dispel with everybody is you certainly can nurse the minute your baby is born after a C-section. Do not let family, friends, anybody tell you that you can. Um... And would I have a C-section again? Absolutely, it, it's, it's not a traumatic experience. It's all what you make of it. So just remember, if you want a calm C-section, you set the tone for it. Ask for music to be played. You wanna be a part of it? Ask for the sheet, the clear sheet or the clear drape. Ask for skin to skin contact after the baby is born. Make sure your spouse or the person going in with you knows your wishes regarding breastfeeding or bottle feeding after you have a baby. And don't feel rushed. If you're not ready to breastfeed after you give birth, you have, they said, I think it was like three hours before I had to nurse her. So take this time, listen to your body. You know your body better than anybody. And does it hurt? Honestly, not really. Like I told you, pooping after her worse. So guys, I hope if you have any questions, just drop them for me below if I forgot to cover on anything. And you're a champ. C-sections are not as bad as people think. And I hope that I answered any questions that you may have. All right, guys, make sure you hit the subscribe button so we can stay connected with each other. I always like to hear from you guys. Have a great weekend.